Hello, my name is Mark Pimtel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to define and use a dual purpose turning tool. Dual purpose as in a tool that can do both drilling and turning. Oftentimes on certain lathes and mill turns, there's limited space on the turret. So this is the kind of tool you would use to open up some space. You basically need one tool to do both things. Let's see how that works inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. So we'll start by going to our technology database. And in the tech DB, I'm just going to define a square insert in my turn tooling section. A square insert because uh, oftentimes these uh, dual uh, purpose tools, they'll have a square insert so that they can do flat bottom drilling as well as turning with the corner of the insert. So I'm going to start with this uh, square insert here. I just made a copy of the existing square insert and I just gave it a new comment. Um, the insert used here could be whatever insert you have on your dual purpose tool. I'm just using a square one because this is, uh, this is the one that I have. So by defining that square insert, if we go back to the turn tooling section, we can define whatever boring bar we want to put that in. So in this case, we can just find one that holds the square insert and then we can assemble those together and then we have a tool to add to our tool crib. So now let's go to the tool crib section. So this being for a turning machine, we'll go to turn. And you'll see that I already have a tool crib here, uh, basically just for the one tool that I'm gonna be defining. Now there's some extra bits in there to help define this dual purpose tool. We'll take a look at that, but I find it might be easier just to do one tool crib for all these definitions. And the reason there's multiple definitions is because the turning tool here called a insert holder, it can't be used in a drilling operation. So for that purpose, I defined a second tool that is of the type drill. So this drill can do the drilling and the insert holder can do the turning, but they're actually the same tool in real life. So I'm defining them both as tool one, but by using substations, I can give the turning side of this tool a substation one, and then the drilling side of this tool a substation of 21. Now this is more specific to the controller on your machine, but by using these substations, I can actually give it two different tool offsets. For the turning, it could be the corner rad of the insert. For the drilling, it could be the center of the tool, the center of the drill. So that drill just needs to be defined as if it's being this, this dual purpose tool being used as a drill. If I have a half inch insert, probably means that I can consider it as a one inch drill. So that's how I've defined it here. So with these two tools, I can do the two different types of operations I'd like to do. And with these two different offsets, I can define them separately for the same tool on the machine. So now that the tooling is done, let's take a look how we would use this in an operation. So I have a very simple turn part here. It's got a hole and a cone that I'm looking to turn. So I'm gonna use that same tool crib that we were just looking at. So if I go to machine, machine definition, you can see that I've loaded the tool here. And by doing it as a separate tool crib, I know that by loading it in here, I can just use that as one tool. So you can see tool station one and the substations that we talked about. So for the purpose of this actual part file, I'm just gonna do use tool crib only. That way we can just call those tools that I've defined. So the usual workflow, I'll go to my top left corner here, extract machinable features. Uh, this part is on size and I'm only really looking to do the internal stuff. So let's take off the face, the OD and the cutoff. The strategy I'd like to use on this internal diameter will be rough and finish. So I'll just go to parameters and let's just change that to rough and finish. And then from there, we'll just generate operation plan. So this particular part only generated the drilling. So I'm going to go back and just define the bore rough from that same feature. But you'll see in the list that it grabbed my square insert. Now this might just be the way that your tech DB is working. This aspect of it, you can always play it around with, but for whatever reason, it didn't grab my tool. So I'm just going to grab it here and then define a simple defaulted bore rough. Okay. And I'll do the same again for the bore finish. Okay, again, it just chose whatever tool I had in my tool list. And you'll notice in the left menu here, I'm using tool 0121, which was my drill, and tool 0101 for, bore, for both the roughing and the finishing. So this is what I was looking for. 
I could just generate the toolpaths here, and you can see that I've got the drill, I've got the rough, and I've got the finish. So everything works the way I want it to work. Now, this sort of workflow I just initially created, but I want this tool selection, these order of operations to be the same way I use this tool over and over again. So this would be where you would save your operation plan. So if I go back to the feature tree, I can right click on that ID feature, go to save operation plan, and then I can cre create a brand new one. Now I've actually created one already. I've created one where I called it combo tool where it's the same tool selection, the same, all the selections you just saw me do already preloaded into my TechDB. So I'm actually just gonna delete this. And I'll just get rid of those operations completely. And now let's see what would happen if I actually were to use this tool as I would like to do in the future. I've already got the tool defined. I've already got all those operations defined. Now I can work through this in the usual feature-based machining that we're familiar with. I'll just go to my ID feature, I'll go to parameters. This time, instead of rough and finish, I'll choose combo tool. So that includes the drilling, the rough and the bore with those specific tools. See from there, before I generate the operation plan, you can see that there are no tool paths there. I'll just do a generate operation plan. There's my three operations generate tool path, and now I have everything there. So now that becomes a operation plan, a set of operations, a set of tools that I can use going forward anytime I wanna use this combo tool. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main line found on our website. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.